iOS 10.3 is almost here. We should be seeing a full release here within a few weeks, but we have a very good idea of what this update brings. So in this video, I thought let me bring all of the most important features together and show you in one video everything you need to know about iOS 10.3 in a video review. While it may not seem like it, this is actually a very significant update. Apple has put in a lot of work fixing a lot of issues and adding some features that I wanted to show you all in one video. So let's get into it and I'll even talk about iOS 10.3 beta 4 which was released today and some of the updates with that one. And understandably one of the biggest features with 10.3 is the AirPods Finder. Apple added this because it was extremely necessary people losing these things even within their own five feet vicinity. So this is very useful. Log in to find my iPhone and you'll see a new tab for AirPods. So you can go ahead and play a sound and it will emit a high-pitched frequency, starting low and then getting much louder. And this will allow you to find them within your immediate vicinity as long as you are connected via Bluetooth. We already actually just experienced the glitch where one of them keeps playing the sound and the other one stopped. Oh, no, it, there it goes. So that's why this is still a beta. In the final release, this should be fixed. Now, immediately using iOS 10.3, you will notice there is a new animation when closing applications. So at first this was when opening them too, but seems like Apple refined that in the latest beta. So when you close the app, you'll get this rounded corner effect, but when you open it, you don't get that anymore. You used to in the earlier betas. In Spotlight, a visual change, if you actually pull down, you'll notice that the emoji key is now inverted. Previously, it was just a stencil outline, and now it's filled in. Open up your settings and you will notice a completely revamped system up here. So this combines your Apple ID and iCloud information all in one hub. So you don't have to go and dig through separate areas, you have a very neat interface over here. Plus, this incorporates settings notifications. So if you have any notifications you need to attend to, you will see them in a list here with a badge on settings. So jump in, you'll see all of your devices in here, and plus your iTunes and App Store settings in here. And in the iCloud settings of that new interface, you'll see this new storage meter. So a very user-friendly way to see how much you have left. There's a neat new interface for entering your password system-wide. So instead of dashes, you now have these empty dots. And when you fill them in, that's what it looks like. And in restrictions, there is a new category here for TV providers. So you can actually limit certain types of TV providers from being accessed. If you try and enter less than four digits in the custom alphanumeric code, let's say just a zero, it won't let you do that. So if you say use anyways, it'll say this password must be longer. In the Maps app, when you're in a city view in any certain area, you know the little weather icon here? Well, now with a 3D Touch compatible device, you can 3D Touch on it and get immediate weather uh, information for this certain area. If you 3D Touch all the way through it, it'll open up in that area in your weather app. I'm really sad to see this one go, but in satellite view, you are no longer able to get a 3D globe view. One of my favorite things about Maps, just how cool it was to play around with this, so this is gone. For the people with a CarPlay enabled device there are some welcome changes here so you'll be able to see your three recently used apps over here you'll be able to see the up next list view for music and EV charging stations are now supported in maps so you will be able to see where those are if you have an electric car and CarPlay enabled devices do have their own individual page now for your hardware units so in the about settings you'll be able to see your software and hardware information of your CarPlay units here and podcasts does have its own widget now so from the lock screen or notification center anywhere you'll be able to to see your recent podcasts and go ahead and click into them. Siri, what are the cricket scores? Here are the scores from the ICC between last Thursday and last Saturday. So Siri has finally learned cricket scores. For the people that follow up on this, you can ask Siri and she will tell you. And Siri has become a lot smarter in this latest update. So you can actually check on the status of payments, pay bills with Siri, and even order future Uber rides. Say maybe, uh, hey Siri, order me an Uber in five hours. And HomeKit does now support dimmable light switches. So you'll be able to dim the light from within HomeKit settings. There's a lot of great updates to the iTunes and app stores. So first off, you can disable in-app ratings and reviews. So if you're tired of getting those pop-ups to I'll go ahead and rate their app, you can disable that. Jumping into the app store, you'll be happy to learn that if you do have a problem with your app and you actually do leave a review, the developers can directly reply to your review on the page here, which is great. Also, you can 3D touch on them and go ahead and you know rate it helpful, not helpful, or report the review. So great little feedback there. And best of all, you can write reviews now without necessarily needing to type in a passcode every single time. And if you do update to iOS 10.3, don't be startled if you see an app one day and it looks like this, the next day it has a different app icon because Apple has given app developers now the power to change your app icons 
over the internet without necessarily needing to push an update. So some of the app icons may change regularly depending on the season, the holiday, or so on. In mail, Apple has made some changes to the navigational buttons over here. So instead of left to right, you have up and down arrows and you can actually see a little bit cleaner look here, how much unread emails you do have if you click back. If you use the news app and you don't like this next up little setting down here, you can disable it as there is an option now to always show next up. You can disable it and you'll no longer get them. Also in news, you can uh, actually dislike and whichever articles or news sources you have disliked, there's now an area in the favorites where you can show the disliked and un unlike them here. Now in iOS 10.3 over here, if you are listening to an Apple Music playlist, previously if you had shuffle and repeat on, you could no longer reorganize these songs. Now you still can. In the privacy settings or privacy settings, you'll see that the diagnostics and usage tab has actually been renamed to analytics. So inside you will find a new option to share iCloud analytics. In the general and about page, if you guys have any old applications that aren't supported on the current version of iOS 10, you'll see them in the list here. And you'll actually get a warning if you launch this application that it soon will not be supported on future versions of iOS. Field test, the tool to check your signal more accurately, has been updated to support Intel modems. Previously, it did not. The freeze text bug has completely been fixed. Well, almost in iOS 10.3. You can still send the malicious contact file, but other than that, if you send the text uh, to freeze anyone's phone, it will no longer work on 10.3. And the biggest change to iOS 10.3 is the new adoption of Apple File System. It rewrites the handling of system memory completely. So jumping in, I want to show you an example of what to expect going from a pre iOS 10.3 version to 10.3. So I had 89.11 after updating 94. So that is over five gigabytes of, you know, just storage that was cleaned up, cleared up, optimized when updating. So you guys can't expect to get more storage after updating with Apple File System. In fact, so many people are reporting a huge boost in improvement, you know, closing, opening applications, closing applications in the app switcher. People are just reporting that it feels much faster. With this update, the performance has increased. I got to tell you, especially on the iPhone 5S, I feel it the most. It feels like it's alive again. It feels almost like iOS 6 era. And that's something I have actually felt just performance wise using it closing opening apps it feels much much snappier also on 5s and iphone 5 when you'd open a folder before and close it right away look at all the labels on the other apps they're like really pixelated and they stay like that for a few seconds with this update apple has actually fixed that so where you open one and close it it's blurry for just a second but not as blurry as it was in this one and apple has been on a bug killing spree so many bugs both useful and not have been fixed the dock bug that i've shown you before to make the dock disappear has been fixed uh, the respring bug where you would slide down on the notification center which i can't do it just froze my phone where you would hold it up and click on that you can no longer do that apple uh, did patch that and i was sad to see the one go on the iphone 5 and 5s the no animations bug where you could kill them entirely and make your device feel a lot faster that has been patched and the last thing i wanted to show you is on the apple watch in its updates you're actually going to be able to activate theater mode so if i click on this you get to this basically it's to keep your device from lighting up every time you reach for popcorn or moving in a theater it's really annoying so i'm glad they came out with this so once your screen dims it doesn't react to your wrist anymore. You can disable it using the crown. So before, this is what it looked like. You didn't have that. It just had a big button there. Now, that's what it looks like over here. And with this version of iOS 10.3 Beta 4, at the time of me making this video, there are just two little changes I wanted to share with you. So when you're in the process of updating your device, it's on the loading bar with the Apple logo, and you click any button, volume, power, or home button, you will get this little notice on your screen. So I could obviously screenshot it, but I did record it, and basically it's gonna tell you that your device will restart shortly. It only appears about one fourth of the way through, not before, but during. Also earlier, a Reddit user did notice that the diagnostics page when sharing information with Apple during a support call has changed. The interface now is a lot cleaner versus before. Not something I personally have ever used, but if you do, it will look a little bit better during now. So guys, that's iOS 10.3. I just wanted to show you a Geekbench as a final thing. And while that's running, I just wanted to say iOS 10.3 is a fantastic update. As long as you're not jailbroken, I, you know, with a 100% certainty say you should update. It is fantastic. I don't usually recommend upgrades like this, but this one I do. You will feel these speed improvements. You will get storage back. You will get a bunch of little optimizations. 
and bug fixes. Oh my goodness, so many bug fixes. No one can affect you with the freeze crash anymore. And overall, it just seems a lot more stable. So, so much yes. Please update, guys. In a second here, I'll give you the Geekbench. But the only issue I have left is with the shutter issue. You know, Apple still refuses to fix the lighting shutter issue. This one in particular, where it's very choppy going from dark to light. Very, very noticeable when recording footage. So I just wanted to say, I don't know if that's a software or hardware issue, but that is my only complaint at the moment. Overall, it's a very stable release, full of features, and there's really not much not to like. So here is beta four and here is beta three. Seems like a little bit of a lower score here. Don't know what that's about, but guys, trust me, it does feel much, much faster when using it. Uh, just the overall stability and solid feeling. So guys, thanks so much for watching. That is iOS 10.3, my review of it. Should you update? Absolutely. If you can, do it. It will improve your experience in almost every single way. Have a great day. Hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.